This is going to be a video about how to recover when you're trying to go disk to VHD from a UEFI or GPT partition. And when you create the new virtual machine in Hyper-V, you start it up and you end up just getting this blinking cursor. So that's a little bit of an involved process, but it shouldn't take more than five minutes uh, to do. So let's go ahead and turn that one off and we will go to a Windows 7 computer. And the reason we're doing that is you have to have a Windows 7 or 8 or any type of uh, workstation where you can install a program called AOMEI, uh, Partition Assistant. Now you get this product, it's free. You get this product from uh, disk-partition.com and install the standard version. Now, if you want to uh, do it on the server itself, then you'll have to do the uh, professional, I'm sorry, the server version, which does cost uh, a little bit more money. So you can definitely do uh, Windows Server operating systems for $160 if you want at disktopartition.com. I'm not with this company, it's just this, this particular program definitely saved me. So uh, what we want to do is after you install the product, it's very simple to install, is you have to take your VHD. Now if you have a VHDX, you're going to have to do another disk to VHD and change the default VHDX uh, to VHD. If your C partition is a uh, is bigger than two terabytes, then you'll have to do the professional version I just showed you, uh, or the server version. If uh, it's less than two terabytes, but you have other partitions that are bigger than two terabytes, don't worry about it. it oh, it's only the C drive you need to worry about. So do your disk to VHD once again, and this time uh, choose the VHD option, not the VHDX. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and take our VHD that is we know is a problem, and we copied it to our workstation. We've installed the free program, and now we need to uh, mount the VHD file. So we go to Computer Management, and you right-click on Disk Management and choose Attach VHD. Again, it doesn't say Attach VHDX. That won't work. Click Browse, and then we'll find our, our VHD file. Click OK. And this could take anywhere from 10 seconds to a few minutes, depending on how big uh, it is and how slow your computer is. All right, so we know that uh, this is now loaded as drive F, which is great. We've installed our program. And it says, uh, because I have the program open, it says, hey, uh, you've, we've noticed that there's a change in here. You've mounted a new VHD. Do you want to update that? And click yes. Now we go back into our program and it sees our F drive, which is our attached VHD. All right, if you see any other partitions on there, just go in and make sure you delete them. Now this, this is just a blank partition, so I can let it go. I don't need that. All right, so I have my partition here. Now I'm going to go up the scale here. I'm going to go to where it says disk 2. All right, disk 2 is obviously this VHD file, and it says GPT on it. I am going to right click on that, and I'm going to convert it to be an MBR disk. So are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I do. And now we have to apply it. So you have to go up here and click apply. And click proceed. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I'm very sure. So again, this could take just a few seconds. And in my case, it did. I'm on an i5 processor, I think with uh, 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, all right, so now we've got our partition. Now we need to copy it back uh, to our server, and then we're going to run some uh, some fixes off the 2008 R2 CD. In this case, it's, that's what it is, but it'll work with any other one as well. So first what I need to do is to close the program, and then I'll go back to my computer management, and I will right-click and choose Detach VHD. Yes, detach it. And now it's gone. Now I have to find my file back on the desktop, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it back into my server. And we'll just rename the, uh, well, actually, we'll just go to a different one here. And I already created a new folder for it, so we'll just paste that right in. And that could take, uh, depending on how big it is, the 70 gigs. So uh, this is going to take a little while. So I'll just go ahead and fast forward, and then we'll go on from the server. 
Okay, our file has finished copying back to our server. So there is the file. Let's go ahead and recreate our Hyper-V. So let's go ahead and choose New, Virtual Machine, and we'll call it New Test. Generation 1. Put in however much RAM you can afford to do. We're going to leave the network connection disconnected for now. And we're going to choose to use an existing virtual hard disk. All right, select our file, click Next, and Finish. All right, so we're not quite done yet. What we want to do is double click on it, choose Media, DVD Drive, and now you want to put in your uh, Windows 2008 R2 DVD. Uh, now, if you, of course, it's a different version of Windows. Put in whatever version you have in there, 2012, you know, whatever it is. Now, go ahead and start, and it should boot off of the DVD itself. So Windows files are loading, and once it's done, we have to do a few more things. Okay, go ahead and click Next at the start screen. Choose Repair Your Computer. Now, instead of getting the, uh, you're using the wrong disk message, you get a new message. Choose the option at the top, Use Recovery Tools. Click Next. Choose the Command Prompt option. And now we're going to type a few commands. The first command is going to be Disk Part for Disk Partition. And that just takes a few seconds to load. Now we're going to do list, list space disk. Shows our disk. Choose select disk. And the disk number, of course, is zero. Now we'll do a list partition. And we'll choose Select Partition 1. Almost done. Uh, now we'll choose Active. So it becomes the Active Partition. Type Exit. Now we're out of Disk Part and we're back to our Command Prompt. Alright, so uh, we're going to go ahead and reboot. And after that, we're going to run a few more commands. So we'll go ahead and click the Restart button. Restarting. All right. We'll go back to our same thing again. Click Repair Your Computer. Click the Use Recovery Tools. Next. And once again, the command prompt. All right, so now we're going to type boot rec slash fix mbr. And then we're going to do the same command, but now we're going to do fix boot. One more command. It's going to be rebuild bcd. And it says it'll take a while, but it actually doesn't take too long. And we're going to reboot one more time, and now our partition should show up. And, of course, choose Yes, or Y for Yes. Okay, now it's done. Very good. Now we'll go ahead and reboot. Make sure you press the button so it boots from the DVD again. Now this is where a lot of instructions on the internet are wrong, where they say you have to boot from a Windows 7 DVD. You do not have to do that. Just you can keep your 2008 R2 or whatever version in there that you're doing and just continue on. 
so we'll click repair our computer one more time hey look at that now we see our partition now we're gonna do one more command go back to our command prompt and we will type uh, CD recovery and we'll do the start repair start rep which is the start repair command this usually doesn't take more than about a minute and we're just about done you may see the screen flash you may see a command prompt but it will say successful when done if it says it's not successful it's because you didn't reboot after the uh, fix boot commands that we did earlier all right now we are going to see if it's going to restart this time don't boot from the dvd just let it boot right into windows it's looking good and there it is booting into windows and now we're applying the computer settings getting close and we are in all right, so I hope that that helped uh, a lot of you out there that are going through converting UEFI and GPT partitions, trying to get into 2008 or 2012 Hyper-V. And if you have any other questions, just go ahead and post them in the video.